Now I'm going to go over the second example for expected value. So this is a very lengthy example, but it has a lot of good information in it. So it says, for $5, a player has a chance to win $40. First, they will pick a duck floating in a kiddie pool with a colored dot on the bottom. Without replacing the duck, they will draw a second duck. There are 27 total ducks, 8 green, 9 blue, 8 red, and 2 purple. If a player chooses a blue duck followed by a green, they win $40. If they choose two green, they will win $5. And if they choose two blue, they will win $1. All other combinations lose. What is the expected value of winning? So the first thing we need to figure out are each of the situations and how much money you'll actually get by the end of it. So our three situations are here. We have a chance to win $40. Um, that's the blue duck followed by a green is 40. So blue to green is 40. And then they have um, two greens is five. So green, then a green. And if there's two blues, then they win one dollar. So a blue followed by a blue. And then you just lose. So those are our four situations and we need to figure out the money from that. So the money earned. To get a blue and then a green you would get forty dollars. So remember it's win minus how much you pay to play. So he won forty or she or you whoever and but you paid five to play. So that means you really only earn thirty five dollars. Um, for green and then green, you win five. So win minus pay, you win five, but you paid five. So you actually earn no money if you get a green then a green. For blue, you win one dollar, but you paid five to play. So you lose four dollars. And then lastly is if you lose. You win nothing and you paid $5. So you lose $5. Now we need to figure out the probability of each of these things happening. So I'm going to draw an example pool right here to kind of mimic for you what would happen. So first we're going to um, choose a blue. So what's the probability of that? So how many total blues are there? And if you look, it's right here. These are the total blues. There are nine blues out of a total of 27 ducks. That's right here. So that's the first probability of choosing a blue. So that's as if we took this blue duck and then it does say um, without putting it back. So we've already chosen a blue duck. So now what's the probability of choosing a green duck? How many total greens are here? Well, if you count them, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight green ducks. So eight ducks out of a total of how many? Well, there were 27, but we took the blue one out. So if you count all of these dots, there are now 26 of them. So that is the probability of going blues and green. Now we need to figure out the probability of going green than green. So let's put the blue duck back. Okay. So now the probability of getting my first green one is how many total greens there are, which is right here. There are eight greens over a total of 27. And then the probability of doing another green. So let's remove our first green duck. Let me find one that I can actually move. There we go. Okay, I took out my first green duck. So how many green ducks are there now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them now. So it's seven out of a total of how many? Well, if you were to count all of them, now that we've removed one, there's now 26. Now we have to do the last situation. Put the green duck back. 
And then the probability of getting a blue one first. So how many total blue? There are nine total blue ones. And how many total ducks completely? Now that they're all back in there, there are 27. So let's pull that blue duck out. Now how many ducks are left? Well, if we count, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. So now we have eight blue ducks. Out of a total of how many ducks now that we took a blue one out? So now there's 26 ducks. And then to figure out losing, it's actually easier if you figure out what all of these decimals are. So it's part of our calculation anyway. We have to do it anyway. Um, but once you figure out what all these decimals are, you just subtract it from one. So you do one minus what each of these decimals are. So let's figure out the decimals first. So on this one, you can actually go ahead and multiply whenever you put them in parentheses. So it would be nine times eight. That's nine, not seven, sorry. Nine times eight divided by 27 times 26. And it would be 0 0.1026, 0 0.1026. So now we got that one, we need to do our next one, which is 8 times 7 divided by 27 times 26. So this is the probability of green and green. And it's 0 0.0798. And then the last one would be exactly like the first one. Can you see the first one is 9 times 8 divided by 27 times 26. This one's 9 times 8 times 27 divided by 27 times 26. So this decimal will be the same as the first one. So now what we do is we subtract all that from one and that'll give us this probability. So minus 0 0.1026 minus 0 0.0798 minus 0 0.126. So what would the probability of this one give me? So we do one minus, in your calculator you could probably arrow up to that, but I have to enter it because um, this is an old calculator. Minus, I'm going to go ahead and put that one down because it's easier. And then minus 0 0.0798, which would give you 0 0.715 of losing. Now we need to multiply our money by each of that. So times 35 times 0 times negative 4 n times negative 5, and I actually want all this to go up one, so hold on a minute. Now you could put all this in your calculator at one time with adding between them. These would all be pluses, um, but you would need to make sure that between those pluses, all of this would be in parentheses if you put it all in your calculator to t at the same time. You have to, have to, have to make sure that you use parentheses around each of those pieces, which would look like this in your calculator. So it looks like this. This is my first part in parentheses with a plus, then my second part in parentheses, which is times zero, so it'll just be zero, with a plus. Our third part in parentheses, make sure this is a negative four, not a minus, or it will give you an error. You have to make sure you use the negative button. Plus, and then our last probability times negative five. And whenever we put that in, our expected value is negative 0.39 which means that you would be expected to earn, well, win that much whenever you're playing. So that means that each time you play, you could lose an average of 39 cents per play. But what if you were running the game, how much would you earn? So we just changed the minus to a positive and that tells you how much you would earn. This question is specifically asking how much you would win, so this is our correct answer. Now I'm gonna show you another example on the next page. So this one says, for $5, a player has a chance to win $300. First, the player will spin a spinner with four equal regions by suit. 
Second, they will randomly select a card from a standard deck. A player must spin and land on a heart. Then they must select a face card of hearts to win $300. If you select any ace after spinning your heart, you will win $9. What is the expected value of running this game? So not of winning it, but of running it. So first we need to figure out each of the situations. So we need to figure out um, money you'll earn. And then the different situations. So the first situation is that they do have to um, spin and land on a heart. That's the first thing they have to do for any of them. Then to win the 300, they also have to select a face card of hearts. So it's a heart and then a face of hearts. And if you didn't know, face cards are jack, queen, and king because they literally have faces on those cards. Um, then the second situation is you would still have to spin a heart first. But then um, you can select any ace to win $9. So heart and then any ace. And that's the card with the big A. There's one for each suit. And then lastly, you could just lose. So how much money do you expect to earn for each of those? Sorry, I wrote these in the wrong line. I'm gonna put them up a line. Well, if it will let me only select. Well, no, nope, it won't. These I'll move up. I'll redraw. So the first one is if you won the total. So how much did you win minus how much you paid to play? Well, for this one, you win $300, but you paid five to play. So you actually get 295. For this one, you win uh, $9 and you paid to play for five. So that means you actually earn four. If you lose, you win no money but you paid five to play. So you lose $5. And then what would be the probability? Well, first of all, spinning a heart on a spinner that's randomly, but is equally split into four sections, hearts, clubs, spades, and diamonds. So if you wanted to do a heart, that is one out of a total of four sections. So winning the spinning of a heart would be one out of four every time. Then to get a face card of hearts. So there are 52 total cards in a deck. If you need a print out of um, the different cards in a deck, I know lots of people didn't necessarily grow up playing cards like I did, I can print that for you. So there are 52 cards. Out of each suit, there are a total of 13. Um, so 13 hearts, 13 spades, 13 clubs, 13 diamonds. And out of face cards, there are three within each. So there are three face cards of hearts. So three face cards of hearts out of a total of 52 cards. Then aces, there's an ace for each suit. There's an ace of hearts, an ace of clubs, an ace of spades, and an ace of diamonds. So four out of a total of 52. And then to do this one, we're just gonna do one minus. So let's figure out what these decimals are first. This decimal for the first one is 0 0.0144. For the second one, it's 0 0.0192. So we subtract both of these from one and that gives us 0.9664 for our last probability. Then we need to multiply each of those probabilities by the amount of money earned. Add each of those together and that will give us our expected value. So the first thing we always figure out is what's the expected value of winning. So here it's negative 51 cents. And that means the expected value of earnings is positive 51 cents, and that's what it was asking. Now I'm gonna show you one more example. This problem says for $14, a player has a chance to win 40. A player will throw a single dart at a 20 by 25 board. The board is covered in, five, in 12 five by five colored squares. 
three are blue, three are red, and seven are green. If the dart hits a red, the player wins $4. If a player hits blue, they win 40. What is the expected value of the earnings? So let's set up how much money you earn for each situation. So here's the beginning of our table. You win 20, well, you earn $26 if you get blue, you earn negative $10 if you get red, and you earn negative $14 if you get green, because that means you lose. Now what's the probability of each? So first of all, how many, what is the size of each of the um, dart boards? What's the probability of getting it? And then, so you would, you have to do the size of each of the boards. So blue, there are three total blues, three total, and the size of each of those blues is five by five. So three times five by five for that area, because this is geometric probability. And the area of the entire board is 20 by 25. And then for red, how many reds do you have? Well, there are two five by five reds over 20 by 25 board. And then how many greens? There are seven five by fives. Actually, we're just going to do minus because it's not just green. It's actually not hitting anything. So that includes ed hitting blank space on the board. So we'll do one minus whatever these are once I figure that out. I'm going to get my calculator and do that now. When you put in a calculator, you must put the numerator in parentheses and the denominator in parentheses so it'll calculate correctly. So this is what each of the probabilities are once you multiply them out and then subtract from one on this last one of the previous probabilities. Now you need to put in the money. Now we have to add all that together and figure out what the expected values are. So when you multiply them all out and add them together, you actually would lose $7.60 every single time you play. That does not sound like a very good game to play. But if you were running it, then you would earn $7.60 every single time somebody played. But you need to make sure that it's enough to where people um, at least feel like they might be winning. So um, go ahead and write down your summary at the bottom and we are finished.